Welcome to Module 1, Individual Timed Sports. Individual timed sports include athletics, Nordic, snowshoeing, speed skating, and swimming. Let's take a look at this quick introductory video. I believe divisioning is uh, important because we have so many very various level of abilities and uh, if we division properly and make sure everyone has an honest effort, we can get the best uh, competition experience uh, not only for the athlete but everyone attending and watching the competition. Special Olympics is founded on the belief that all people with intellectual disabilities deserve the opportunity to train and compete in sport and to have the chance of achieving success whether that is a personal best or a gold medal. Special Olympic sports competitions are based on the idea that athletes of all abilities should be given an equal chance of succeeding. We do this through a unique process called divisioning which groups individual athletes or teams according to gender, age and most important by ability levels. Divisioning is a unique process that is a cornerstone of our program and it is required at all levels of Special Olympics competitions and in all sports. Divisioning is the most important part of a Special Olympic competition. It ensures that the athletes will be competing against other athletes of equal ability and that's really the only way to give them meaningful competition. Straight away I recognize the value of divisioning and the purpose behind divisioning around giving athletes the best opportunity at their ability to participate. Divisioning is the most important part of any sport within Special Olympics. I think uh, any race you can watch where it's right down to the wire is always uh, most enjoyable and uh, I believe that's why divisioning is so important in Special Olympics. According to Article 1 of the Special Olympics sports rules, there should be a minimum of three and a maximum of eight athletes or teams in a division. There should be no more than a 15% difference between the highest and lowest skilled athlete or team. This is a guideline, not a rule. An example of this appears in the following graphic. In this competition, for instance, there are 13 athletes entered in a 25 meter event. The preliminary times range from 11.3 to 19 seconds. In order to group athletes so that there is no more than a 15% difference, you have to divide this group of athletes into three heats. The Games Management System, also known as GMS, is a software system that is a powerful tool used to help organizers run quality competitions. One of the features of GMS is being able to use the system to division your event. Divisioning is normally a two-stage process. Prior to the competition, a time or distance is submitted for each athlete. Wherever possible, divisioning events are run at Special Olympics competitions and the results of these are used to determine divisions for finals. Of course, in many sports, there is no time or distance that you can use to assess ability. Examples would be judge sports like gymnastics, racket sports such as badminton, and team sports. Here we use various ways of assessing each player or team's ability, such as a player rating or skills assessment form, which is submitted by a coach prior to the event. Then, at the competition, there will be a series of short matches between athletes or teams to assess their ability in a game situation and they will be placed in final divisions by a committee appointed for this purpose by the competition management. To maintain the integrity of Special Olympics competition, there is a maximum effort rule by which an athlete or team who performs significantly better in finals relative to their entry or preliminary event may be subject to disqualification. The coach of each athlete or team plays a critical role in ensuring fair divisioning and minimizing the chance of their athlete or team being disqualified. Clearly, an accurate score or skills assessment cannot be submitted 
if the coach does not know how the athlete or team performs in competition. In order to create good divisions and equal competition, it is critical for coaches to submit their athletes' best times or scores to competition organisers prior to the event. It is the responsibility of the coach to inform competition management if their athlete or team performance in a preliminary event did not accurately reflect their ability. When the divisioning process has been completed, there will be instances where there will still be less than three competitors or teams in each division. Where this is the case, the following process should be used. According to Article 1 of the Special Olympic Sports Rules, modify age groups, modify ability range, combine genders. Article 1 specifies the age groups which should be used when divisioning athletes or teams. Let's look again at our 25 metre race. This time we have added age groups to the mix. If we use the principle of applying gender, then age group, then ability, we get this result. The concern here is that we now have four divisions, but two of them have only two athletes. By combining two age groups into one, based on the athlete's qualifying score, we now have three divisions, all with at least four athletes, and without exceeding the 15% ability range. To summarise, remember that you division a Special Olympics event by gender, age, and most importantly, ability. Good divisioning is critical to running a successful Special Olympics competition. You are trying to ensure that competition is meaningful with as many athletes as possible in a division, while at the same time giving every athlete or team a reasonable chance of success. This can be challenging when you have athletes or teams of widely differing age ranges and ability levels, but remember, good divisioning is an art, not a science. As mentioned in the video, for most individually timed sports, including athletics, Nordic, snowshoeing, speed skating, and swimming, athletes are divided first based on their gender. The second criteria for divisioning in individual timed sports is age. The most common age brackets that are used in Special Olympics Ontario are ages 18 to 11, 12 to 15, 16 to 21, 22 to 30, 31 to 39, and 40 and above. In some cases, these age divisions are reduced to broader age categories. It is important to check the competition invitation to determine which age categories will be used in each competition. Your provincial sport convener or the other Special Olympics Ontario's sport and competition consultants can answer any questions you have about age groupings used in the divisioning process. The third and final divisioning criteria for individual timed sports is ability. An athlete's ability is the primary factor in divisioning Special Olympics competitions. The ability of an athlete in an individual timed sport is determined by an entry score or the results of a preliminary event at the competition itself. Special Olympics Ontario's policy on divisioning states the recommended maximum performance difference between athletes in a division is 25%. For events that do not have preliminary heats, athletes will be redivisioned based on final times. When an event is referred to in an individual time sport, it is referring to the definition of the race in question. It should include the distance that is going to be raced and any other defining quality. For swimming, you could be referring to the 100 meter breaststroke. For Nordic skiing, it could be the 2.5 kilometer classic. A heat is a group of athletes that will be racing at the same time within an event. This is normally determined by pre-submitted or qualifying times. 
The number of heats is entirely dependent on how many athletes are entered into an event and how many lanes are available during the competition. You may hear someone say that Johnny is going to race in the third heat of the 25 meter race. It is important to remember that athletes participating in a heat together may or may not be competing against each other for award placement. A division, on the other hand, is the grouping of athletes that are competing against each other for award placement. The previously mentioned criteria on gender, age, and ability are used to determine which division an athlete will be placed into. Preliminary rounds are held at conference competitions, provincial qualifiers, and all major games. Community hosts may choose to include them if time permits. A preliminary round refers to the first round of a single event that is held when there are two rounds held during the same competition. Results from the preliminary round are used to determine athletes' placement in their division and which heat they will compete in during the final round. For example, at the provincial qualifier for snowshoeing, Susie competed in the fourth heat of the 100 meter race in the preliminary round in the morning. She will be competing in the final in the afternoon. In Special Olympics, all athletes advance to the final round. This is why divisioning is so important. A final round is the second round of a single event when two rounds are held at the same competition. The final round is used to determine award placement. At some competitions, some or all events will go straight to finals. These events are then called timed finals. This process is explained on the next slide. Competition hosts may choose not to hold preliminary events if they are running a friendly or invitational competition. Often at these types of competitions, there are time constraints that do not allow for preliminary events to be held. When a competition is running all events as timed finals, qualifying scores, the scores that coaches submit to the competition host to register an athlete in an event, will be used to determine the placement of athletes into their final heats. To ensure that the competition runs on time, hosts often choose to fill the pool or the track by combining genders and or ages and grouping the athletes by their time. When timed finals are used, the event is divisioned once all heats have been held and award placement is determined based on the divisions that have been assigned. In the case of timed finals, this could mean that athletes did not actually physically compete against individuals from their division, and it is possible to see multiple first places awarded to athletes that competed in the same heat. In other words, the order that athletes come in during their heat in the timed final has no bearing on their final award placement. When a competition holds preliminary and final rounds, the athletes' qualifying scores are used to determine which heat they will race in during the preliminary round, often referred to as the prelim. After all of the prelim heats have been held for an event, the results are division to determine final division placement for all of the participating athletes. During the final heats, all athletes will race against other athletes in their final division. It is important to note, though, that there can sometimes be multiple divisions competing in a single heat, as divisions with small numbers of athletes will normally be combined to fill all lanes. Special Olympics recommends that GMS is used to division all individual timed sports. However, because it is important for all hosts and coaches to understand how divisions are created, we will be demonstrating how to manually create divisions. For more information on GMS, please visit our SOLEARN site to take our e-course on GMS. The first thing you need to do, whether you are assigning divisions manually or using GMS, is determine if you have all of the information you need. For each athlete, you will need their name, gender, date of birth, SO registration number, the events they are registering for, and their qualifying scores for each event. 
If you are not provided with all of the required information, you will need to go back to the coach that provided the registration information and let them know that the athlete in question will not be registered to compete at the competition until all mandatory information is provided. Now let's take a look at how divisions are created. When assigning divisions, the first thing you should do is determine who should be in which division based on gender and age. For simplicity's sake, we will only be using female athletes in this demonstration. With these athletes, Anna, Lucy, Beth, Kate, Susie, Maya, and Amanda, we should first arrange them according to their age groups. If we arrange the athletes according to their ages, we can break them into their age divisions. Remember, in this case, we are only using female athletes. At a competition, you will need to arrange them by age in their gender categories. When we break the athletes out into their age categories, we see that we now have three different groups that we are working with. Anna is in her own age group because there are no other athletes that are between the ages of 16 and 21. Four of the athletes are in the 22 to 30 age range and two are in the 30 to 39 age range. As Anna is the only athlete in her age category, she is in a division by herself. We will assign the prefix F1 to her division. When we look at the 22 to 30 age category, we see that we have four athletes that fall into this age bracket. Let's reorder them according to their times. Now we start with the fastest time, which is Amanda, with a time of 1 minute and 2 seconds. Here is where we have to pull out the calculator. When you are calculating the 25% ability difference, most people would assume that you figure out what 25% of 62 seconds is, and any time falling within that time frame would be in the same division. What you actually need to do though is calculate the ability difference from the median time, and times falling within 12.5% above or below the median time will be in the same division. So if we think that Amanda and Susie might be in the same ability division, we can start working on the calculations. We take the two times and convert them into seconds. So one minute and two seconds become 62 seconds, and one minute and 15 seconds become 75 seconds. To find the median time between the two, we do the following math. 75 take away 62 is 13, then 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. Lastly, we add 62 and 6.5 to get a median time of 68.5 or 1 minute and 8.5 seconds. Now to figure out our division, we will take our median time of 68.5 and see what falls within the 12.5% above and below that time. To find this number, we take 68.5 and multiply it by 0.125 which gives us 8.563. Now to find the fastest and slowest times in this division, we add or take away 8.563 from that median time. In this case, it gives us a slowest time of 77.0625, which is one minute and 17.0625 seconds, which means that Susie's time of 1 minute and 15 seconds will be included in this division. On the faster end, that gives us a time of 59.937 seconds, which means that both Amanda's time of 1 minute and 2 seconds and Kate's time of 1 minute and 6 seconds will be included in this division as well. When we go back to our 20 to 30 age group of athletes, we will now assign Amanda, Kate, and Susie to division F2, which will leave Beth in her own division, which we will call F3. If we arrange the athletes according to their ages, we can break them into their age divisions. Remember, in this case, we are only using female athletes. At a competition, you will need to arrange them by age in their gender categories. 
When we break the athletes out into their age categories, we see that we now have three different groups that we are working with. Anna is in her own group because there are no other athletes between the ages of 16 and 21. Four athletes are in the 22 to 30 range and two athletes are in the 31 to 39 age range. Using the math that we just did, we will see that in our oldest age category, that Lucy and Maya should be in the same division. So when we put everything together, we see that we have ended up with a total of four divisions. Now it's time for you to take what you have just learned. Get a piece of paper and a pencil and a calculator and place these 10 gentlemen into their final divisions. When you have finished, answer the following questions. Number one, how many divisions did you end up with? Three, four, or five? The answer is five divisions. Number two, true or false? All athletes in the 22 to 29 age category ended up in the same division. The answer is true. The rationale behind this is that the median time is 1 minute and 21.5 seconds, 12.5% equals 10.1875 seconds, slowest time that could be included is 1 minute and 31 seconds, 0.69, and the fastest time that could be included is 1 minute and 11.30 seconds. Number 3. True or false? Kyle and Patrick ended up in the same age category and the same division. The answer is false. Number four, which athletes ended up in their own division? Was it John, John and Patrick, Mike and Patrick, John, Mike and Patrick? The answer is John and Patrick. Thank you for taking Module 1 of the Divisioning 101 course. We hope that you have gained a better understanding of how individual timed sports are divisioned during competition. If you would like to take another module in the Divisioning 101 series, please return to the course's main page and select the module that you would like to take.